Hello, my dear students. Hope you are all doing great. Today we will talk about a different topic, and this one is an interesting topic. This is adaptation and survival. We will talk about the adaptations for animals and even for plants that they have in their environment in order to survive, in order to stay alive. So let's just start by the definition of the word adaptation. We say that survival in any ecosystem is a constant struggle. An adaptation is any characteristic, any feature that helps an organism to survive in its environment. So an adaptation is any characteristic that helps an organism to survive in its environment. Over time, the organisms with successful adaptations only will survive more frequently than other organisms. Yes, then their offspring will inherit these adaptations. Adaptations can be structural or behavioral. Let's start by the structural adaptation from its name. Structural means I'll change the structure of the organism, whether from inside or the outside. So structural adaptations are adjustments to internal or external physical structure, like the fur color, long limbs, strong jaws, and even the ability to run fast. All these are structural adaptations. Some structural adaptations help organisms survive in certain environments. Let's see like what? Like these ducklings, if you can see them. Huh? For example, ducks have webbed feet that help them survive in water. Also, the cacti have thick waxy cuticle that prevents water loss in their dry environment because they live in the desert. Also, many plants such as roses and the cacti have thorns or spines on their stems. As you can see, these are the spines of the cactus and these are the thorns or the spines even for roses. These modified leaves protect the plant from herbivores. Other structural adaptations protect prey from predators or enable predators to hunt more successfully. Like what? Turtles have hard shells. As you can see, this is the hard shell of the turtle that protect them from predators. Also, predators such as sharks have an excellent sense of smell and sharp teeth. Both of these traits help sharks to catch their prey. Other structural adaptations like this puffer fish you might be surprised to know that both the pictures are for only one fish. Yes, the one to the left, this is the normal state. And the one to the right, this is the same fish when it is threatened. When puffer fish, this fish is named the puffer fish. When puffer fish are threatened, they fill their bodies with air or water. In this case, as they fill up, their, their spines are pushed out. Their spines and the larger size protect them from predators. Then we move to the second type of adaptation, which is behavioral adaptations. A behavioral adaptation, this is, will be a change in the behavior of the animal or the organism. A behavioral adaptation is any adjustment in an organism's behavior. Like what? Wolves traveling in packs is a behavioral adaptation, like this one here in the picture. The wolf packs can hunt large prey that one wolf alone cannot capture. Also, many prey animals travel in groups like these fish. Some fish swim in schools for protection from predators. A group of fish is named school. Symbiotic relationships that we mentioned in a previous episode, all these are also behavioral adaptations. Some behavioral adaptations help animals survive seasonal changes in the climate. Like what? Many animals such as birds, butterflies, and the fish migrate. The word migration itself means the movement of animals to find food or reproduce in a better conditions or find less severe climate, less hard climate. Okay. Other animals such as bats, snakes, turtles, and the frogs, they hibernate to escape the cold. So what is the meaning of hibernation? Hibernation is a period of inactivity during the cold weather, generally during winter. The animals remain inactive until warmer temperatures return in spring. Other behavioral adaptations like these animals, they are named sea otters. The sea otters eat shelled animals like crabs and the clams. So how they break the shell of these animals? They crack open the shells using rocks. How? 
An otter will hold a rock on its stomach, then smash the crab or the clam against the rock. Also other behavioral adaptations, for example, elephants have complex social behaviors. Adult elephants form herds, so the group of elephants is named herd. Adult elephants form herds that protect their young from predators and other dangers. Also, young elephants will often hold on to its mother's tail, like the one in this picture, not to get lost or to stay close to the herd. Then let's move to the plant's adaptations. What are some plant adaptations? Let's see. Do you remember the angiosperms, the plants that produce fruits, the flowering plants? Angiosperms have scented flowers that attract certain pollinators. So they have scented flowers. Scented means have a good smell. Angiosperms have a good smell, good smelling flowers to attract the pollinators in order to transport the pollen grains. They have leaves that catch the sunlight and roots that soak up water. So these and other adaptations help plants survive in its environment. Some plants have specific structural adaptations to different environments, like what? Like the rainforest plants, such as orchids. Do you remember the orchids? Okay, have adaptations that help them survive wet, hot temperatures. This is the weather of the rainforest. So the orchid's stems have storage organs called pseudobulbs. Pseudobulb, the P is silent. This is pseudobulb. Bulb like the electric bulb, it means swelling. Pseudo means this is a fake one or not real one. So the orchid's Orchid stems, the stems itself have a storage organ named pseudobulb. It's like a swelling. They store water for the plant. Also, an orchid's aerial roots help secure it high in the rainforest tree. These roots also absorb the water from the moist air. This is also another adaptation. Like many rainforest plants, orchids have drip tip leaves. Drip tip leaves. These leaves are adapted to the constant wet conditions in the rainforest. Their tips drain excess water. These are the adaptations of orchids. The aerial roots to absorb water from the air. We have the drip tip leaves to drain the excess water. And we have the stems have pseudo bulbs to store water for the plant. Other plant adaptations like the plants that live in the desert, like the cactus, the hot, dry environment, they have thick, waxy stems. Can you see the stem? It is thick and waxy. Whenever you hear thick, waxy stem, this is to prevent water loss. And also look at the roots. The roots, they are not very long. They are shallow roots and they are very dense. They are thick in order to soak up the rain quickly. Other plants that live in forests, such as this oak tree, this is oak tree, lose their leaves in the winter. Why these, these trees lose their leaves in the winter? In order to prevent water loss. Also, other plants that live in colder climates, like moss. Can you see this green plants? This is moss. This is snow, so it lives in cold climate environment. So these cold climate plants, such as moss, they are able to complete their life cycle, all the life cycle in a shortened growing season, in a shorter period of time in order to survive. Other plants, they are called aquatic plants. Aquatic means live in the water or related to the water. So these plants, some aquatic plants such as water lilies, as you can see, these are the water lilies, these beautiful ones, have a stomata on top surface of the leaf instead of the bottom. The ordinary state for any plant is that the leaves have the stomata on the bottom or the lower side of the leaf. But in case of aquatic plants such as water lilies, the stomata are on the top surface of the leaf instead of the bottom. Why? This is enables the stomata to take in the carbon dioxide it needs for photosynthesis and release the oxygen as a product from photosynthesis. Many plants have adaptations that defend them from herbivores, like what? Some plants produce chemicals that give them a bad taste. Whenever or when most herbivores eat these leaves, they do not like the taste and stop eating the plants. So this is how these plants survive. Other plants such as milkweeds, like the ones in this picture, 
produce chemicals that are poisonous to most animals. Both of these adaptations protect the plants from predators. Then we will move to animal adaptations. These are more like animal adaptations. Let's start. Like plants, animals have adaptations that help them survive in specific environments. Let's see. Some animals that live in cold climates have thick fur and extra body fat. This is to keep them warm. Yes. Desert animals are often nocturnal. Nocturnal, the word the nocturnal means active at night. This is so important. Desert animals stay in shelters or underground burrows during the day to avoid the heat. Then nocturnal animals come out at night to search for food because the weather is not as hot as the day is. Animals that live in water also have adaptations. Aquatic animals are usually much more streamlined than land animals. Streamlined means their body is shaped more like a streamline in order to move easily in the water. This allows them to swim quickly through the water. Aquatic mammals can hold their breath uh, for long periods of time. The aquatic mammals like the whales. Other aquatic animals breathe underwater using gills. Many animal adaptations develop because of predator and prey relationships. Like what? Prey have adaptations to enable them to avoid predators. Also predators have adaptations that help them hunt and capture prey. Prey animals such as gazelles are able to run at speeds of up to 80 kilometers per hour. Can you imagine this? Some animals use chemicals to escape predators. When skunks are threatened, they spread a bad smelling liquid. These adaptations help prey escape predators. Also, we have other adaptations like this owl. Predators also have adaptations that make them more efficient hunters. Owls, for example, have several adaptations that make them successful night hunters. So owls are nocturnal. Let's see some of these adaptations. Look at the owl's ears. Yes, the birds have ears. Owls ears, owls have excellent hearing, which helps them hunt. One of their ears is higher than the other one. Look, this is the, the drawing of the skull of an owl. This is an ear the left one to the top and the right one to the bottom or downside a little. This increases their ability to, to distinguish where sounds are coming from and how far away they are. Can you imagine? Then the owl's eyes. Owls have large eyes that help them see tiny prey such as mice in the dark. Their eyes are positioned at the front of their head to give them better vision. Also, the owl's wings have adaptations. An owl's large muscular wings help it swiftly hunt for prey. How? Special tips on the wing feathers muffle the sound of air rushing over the wings as the owls fly. In this case, it helps the owls fly silently. Can you imagine it even fly silently? Also, the owl's feet. Look at the claws. Oh my God. And owl's feet are also adapted for hunting. They have large talons or claws for accurately grabbing prey. This adaptation helps them pick up larger prey animals. Then let's move to another type of adaptation. This is named camouflage. Camouflage. Some adaptations or some organisms increase their survival in an environment by blending in. Can you see the fish in this picture? Huh, here it is. This is the fish that we are talking about. Camouflage is any coloring or shape or pattern that allows an organism to blend in with its environment. Predators are camouflaged to sneak up on prey. Camouflage also helps prey animals to hide from their predators. Then we move to a second type. This is named protective coloration. Protective coloration is a type of camouflage in which the color of an animal helps it blend in with its environment. So protective coloration is a type of camouflage. Look at this fox. 
In winter, the Arctic fox has a white coat that blends in with the snow. In summer, the fox's coat changes color to help it blend in with the plants that grow in the warm weather. Also look at this tiger. A tiger's stripes make it difficult to see in the grass. Stripes help a tiger conceal or hide itself from its prey. We have another adaptation, which is protective resemblance. Some organisms go beyond the protective coloration. How? Protective resemblance is matching the color, shape, and texture of an organism or of the environment. Protective resemblance is the matching of the color, shape, and texture of an environment. Look at this walking stick. This is an insect named the walking stick insect. For example, resembles a stick or a small branch in its environment. Then we have mimicry. This is so important. Some animals have adapted to their environment by copying other well-adapted organisms. This is like uh, imitation. Mimicry is an adaptation in which an organism is protected against predators by its resemblance to an unpleasant animal. Like what? Let's see. This is the Viceroy butterfly, for example, is protected from predators because it looks like the bad tasting poisonous monarch butterfly. This is the Viceroy, this is the prey that is resembling another one, which is much stronger, which is the monarch butterfly. This, the monarch butterfly is a bad tasting butterfly and also poisonous, but the Viceroy butterfly, it resembles it's look to the monarch butterfly. This is mimicry. Also, mimic organisms can look so much like a dangerous or unpleasant animal that predators stay away, like the bees. So, for example, the rubber fly, the one on the top, resembles the dangerous bumblebee. This is the one that sting, the dangerous bumblebee. Can you differentiate between them? It is hard too. Also, the king snake mimics the coloring of the poisonous coral snake. Can you see the king snake to the right? It mimics the coloring of the poisonous coral snake. Predators also use mimicry. And instead of warning their prey, predators use mimicry to deceive it. Look at this one. This one is named the snapping turtle. Can you see its mouth? Can you see this part that looks like a worm? This is the lure or the bait. This is a part of the turtle's tongue. It uses as a bait in order to catch small fishes that come to eat this as it is a worm, as if it is a worm. Some snapping turtles, for example, have the ability to wag. Wag means a shake, a fleshy lure. Lure means bait in their mouth. The lure looks like a worm. When a fish comes closer to try to eat the worm, the turtles catch the fish. Can you see how sneaky this one is? Look at it from a closer look. This is its head. Can you see the lure? This is the one that looks like a worm. It looks tasty for fish. Can you imagine this? I hope you enjoyed this episode. See you in the next one. Thank you, guys, and goodbye.